Good day, all. Welcome to this 3.0 Spotlight on Agile Management with ClickUp. My name is Alex Kunzer, and I'm a Senior Solutions Engineer at ClickUp. I've been here about two and a half years, and I've seen a handful of evolutions of the tool bringing new products to the marketplace. I'm excited to explore this evolution with you today. Over the next 15 minutes, we'll be discovering and uncovering new features that are related to 3.0 and specifically focused on Agile teams. The five elements for today's discussion are shown on your screen now. First, we'll start with new folder overviews or location overviews. Then we'll explore Kanban board view and its updates. Next, we'll dive into sprints and how they become more flexible and nimble to meet your team's needs. Fourth, we'll uncover task updates so that way you can see more information and have it be readily available. And finally, we'll wrap up with dashboard updates or business intelligence BI capabilities within the tool. Excellent. Let's jump in. Within this instance of ClickUp, you can see that there is one space to organize the software development organization. Within this space, there's folders to support the roles and responsibilities of this organization and support the teams or squads that operate within the software development org. So you can see things like the roadmap and backlog for planning. Each team or squad, squad one and two, have places to go to manage their work on a sprint by sprint basis. The design folks have a place to go to track what the art of the possible is for what they're bringing to the marketplace. And finally, you can see that there's knowledge sharing or a knowledge repository structure with a template guide, technical support, and QA. Jumping into location overview or folder overview. This is where you can now see by clicking into something like the roadmap and backlog, an overview of this given folder. So now you can see the items or the lists that live within this folder and their progress, making it more simple to see the data and the progress of each list or project in one place. You can track what the progress is, start and due dates, and who owns this work for accountability. This is a bird's eye view that enables more information readily available. The next piece I'd like to call out, at the top of the screen, you can see that there's a place for resources, a card for docs, and a card for recent places. The resources on the right side allow you to integrate and link out to items that are relevant for this group to have on speed dial, for a lack of a better term. So the thing I've um, linked in this case is actually the, the slide deck that I used to tee up this conversation. One of those examples where you might want to link out things to your G Suite or your OneDrive or SharePoint, whatever is suiting your team's needs. In the center, you see docs. This is supporting the ClickUp native docs feature to host things like release notes, standard operating procedures, anything that you need quickly accessible can be pinned in that docs card. Lastly is recent. Recent is if you've accessed any locations or lists within the uh, roadmap and backlog location, it'll show as a recent so you can access that quickly again. Okay, let's go into board updates or Kanban board updates without further ado. Going back into the hierarchy and leveraging squad two using Kanban, going to the Kanban backlog, and you can see that there is a different view for swim lanes. As a reminder, creating a board view, it's very easy. By clicking the plus view button and collecting board, you can then just simply populate the information that you, you desire. Clicking into swim lanes, you can now see that there's both the columns that go from left to right and the rows that go from top to bottom, be that urgent, high, normal, low, and if things do not have priority. It's very simple to turn on the swim lanes or those rows at hand. The top of your screen, you can see that there is a group by feature and functionality. The group by allows you to either toggle on the swim lane or toggle off and then control what that row is populated by, be that assignee or priority, or maybe even a custom field that you're tracking from a different data type. This empowers you to see the data by a one level further of information to help you delineate what to focus on for a given standup or a given week's plan. Next. Let's talk about sprints and all the updates that have been reported through ClickUp 3.0 within the sprints realm. Going back to the hierarchy and moving from squad two to squad one, you can see that there is a handful of sprints already created. The key call out is at the top of your screen, you can see that there is now data associated with the given sprint. Things like in progress, or if you have my market as done, 
owning what the start and due date is of the given sprint, associating or rolling up the associated amount of sprint points within this sprint, and then being able to lock your forecasts. So for your reporting purposes, you can track what you indeed planned for and then what actually happened. So creating another level of support or visualization for your BI needs. Lastly, a piece that's very exciting is there is now a way to interface with the ClickUp dashboards directly from a sprint at hand. So clicking view dashboard will pre-populate a burn up and burn down chart for you. This is now more nimble than ever. What that means, practically speaking, is that you can do things like changing the sprint dates outside of your standard bounds of say two weeks, for example, clicking on the edit and clicking edit sprint, you can either change the name and then either set your default duration, which is the rules of your sprints, or go to custom and then modify those on a sprint by sprint basis. This is very powerful now because you can support days like that are might be holidays for the group or even support the uh, leave of folks or if a team is on PTO for an extended period of time. Let's jump into the new, a task view. Going back to the hierarchy and going into the product backlog, I'm going to explore the home page. The home page now, as, a, as an epic, you can see that there is still similar data, but it's organized in different ways. So the powerful piece about this is scrolling down, you can still see who's assigned to, I'm just gonna assign this out to myself, and then see the dates that the epic is targeted to be completed by, track the description of this epic, and then see the subtasks or the user stories that roll into this. The new feature that's powerful is that you can actually now pre-populate the columns that are associated with your subtasks. So you can have more feature or data rich experiences without having to click into the minutia. This allows you to be work quicker because you have the data at your fingertips when you click into something like an Epic. The other piece worth calling out is where you can now track your activity log and your other integrations like links and things. So now you can link out to your GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket instance native on the right side, and it will visualize with an icon or create your relationships or doc links to this specific Epic all in context of this one, one place. It's an easier experience to access maybe the things that are networked related to this homepage epic. Final piece for today's discussion is exploring the dashboards and reporting. Clicking out of this item and going into dashboards and reporting, there is now a facelift within the BI capabilities. So you can now see that there is a sprint burn down and burn up chart that is very data rich. You can track total effort, remaining effort, what's completed daily, and the non-working days within a sprint. These are all very powerful pieces of information so you can track the trend of how your team completes work over that given sprint, given the data, that the data hygiene is up to date. The inverse is the sprint burn up or tracking how fast you've completed the sprint points that you've assigned at the beginning of a sprint. You can also see other information like cumulative flow, cycle time, and lead time. And also there is a velocity chart to get your velocity score to better for, to better understand what the uh, sprint points are completed by that given team. These are the updates for the 3.0 spotlight. Going back to the items we've covered, what the new folder overview is and how the location overview is supporting a single pane of glass. So that way you can drill into the hierarchy where you need to, but also get insights at a higher level. Next, we chatted through the board view or the Kanban board view and how to enable swim lanes. So that way you can see more information where you need it, both in the columns and in the rows, given that you toggle it on. Third, we discovered or uncovered the sprint updates, making them more flexible and capturing more data. So now you can change the dates of given sprints one off or uh, strategically through the automations and then be able to track what the start due date is, how many sprint points have been summated by that sprint, and ultimately locking down a forecast to compare it later. We dove into one task or one epic and explored how you can further get uh, get into the subtasks with showing different custom fields all in one place. Then on the right side of the screen, exploring where the relationships are, being able to see the both internal relationships to tasks and other docs, docs but then also being able to link out or integrate with items like Bitbucket, GitHub, or GitLab. Lastly, we uncovered the dashboard updates or the BI updates and the 3.0 visualization or a new way to see all of the data for burn up, burn down, 
commutative flow, and velocity charts. Thanks for this discussion, y'all, and I look forward to our future together. Take care.